tired of playing BeamNG like this? Well, you clicked on the right video. Because I'll show you how to go from this to this. So welcome to my updated tutorial for BeamNG Drive on how to increase frame rates without making your game look like complete sh**. In this video, I will be showing you step by step which graphical settings to change. Note that the order of these changes is not random, rather it is in the order of the impact they have on visuals. And as soon as you reach what is generally regarded as a playable frame rate, you can either skip to the concluding chapters or continue watching to further improve your frame rates and maybe match your monitor's refresh rate. This video is split into chapters to make it easier for you to follow along, and I've tried my best to be as easy to understand as <laughs> And with this out of the way... If you're whipping your mama's thick-ass laptop from 2009, I'm pretty sure that changing a few graphic settings here and there ain't gonna do shit. This tutorial is for people who can already run BeamNG at frame rates that are playable, or at least just below that. I'm talking 20 FPS and above. If your hardware is the problem, you could still watch this video and see how far you can go, but probably your best option is just to upgrade. I would recommend one of these things. Looking at the used market, the Valve Steam Deck, and Nvidia GeForce Now. But now, let's talk. If you're wondering if your hardware is good enough, here are the minimum specs listed on the BeamNG Drive Steam page. Being honest, these are, how can I say, optimistic? So here are the minimum specs I would personally recommend. And for those of you who are curious, this is what is inside my own glorified metal box. So before tweaking the graphical settings, let us begin with displaying your frame rate. To show you the funny numbers, either press Ctrl F, or go to Options, and toggle Show FPS under the Debug section. And with this done, you can now proceed with turning off all frame rate limiters within BeamNG. Again, go to Options, Display, and set Vertical Sync to Off. And do the same thing if you also have an FPS limiter. In most cases, this should have done the trick, but if for example you have a monitor with variable refresh rate technology, such as NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync, you may have to head to Graphics Card's control panel to turn off even more settings. I have an NVIDIA GPU, so I'll be showing you what settings you need to change in the NVIDIA control panel, but I'm pretty sure that the AMD one is not that different. If someone can write the process for AMD in the comment section, I'll do my best to get it at the top. I actually have no idea if you have to close BeamNG. So just in case, close BeamNG, right-click on your desktop, open that bitch up, then head to Setup G-Sync and uncheck the very first box. Then head to Manage 3D Settings and make sure that max frame rate is off. Monitor technology is set to fixed refresh and vertical sync is off. Note that you will have to enable these settings again once you're done with the graphics optimization. But don't worry, I'll remind you. And now the only thing left to do is to create the worst case scenario for the game. And it's actually really simple to do. Just head to the most intensive map. Optimizing your settings for the worst performing level means that you will be good wherever you decide to go. But what is the most intensive map? Well, I tested all of them. And to nobody's surprise, it's West Coast USA. If after optimizing your computer still can't handle West Coast USA, feel free to exclude that map from your roster and try optimizing your settings with other less intensive maps. Here are all of the default maps in order from the most intensive to the least intensive. And now you should be all set for the- Okay, so if you skip to here, welcome. I strongly recommend watching the first part of the video too, but for everyone else, it is finally time for the optimization. Also, please comment your frame rate before and after watching this. I am curious to see if it actually helps or if I just wasted everyone's time here. But anyways, to begin the optimization, press escape, go to options, and that should already have you in the graphics tab. I will start off with the people who have high-end systems, roughly RTX 3070 and above. Mid-range and potato people, feel free to skip to the chapters dedicated to you, or you can just follow in for fun, I don't know. So, we're starting off with everything turned to the max. 
This is very stupid, and I'm doing it just as an example to prove that minuscule visual changes can lead to massive performance differences. So to start off, the first thing you want to change are the settings for dynamic reflections. If you have a very good GPU, you can get away with running these settings, but in my opinion, they're just not worth it. I recommend turning down the resolution to 512, the update rate to 3, and the distance to 750. Also, the time marks being over 6000 has no sense at all, so set it back until the game stops complaining. Very good. These are the settings I personally use in all of my videos, and it is a very good place to be for people with high-end specs. But if you want to optimize even further, I recommend dropping the update rate to a 2, the detail to a 0.5, and the distance to 250. And finally, you could also consider dropping the lighting quality from ultra down to high. And now, you high-end boys should be good. But if you still want more FPS, feel free to follow along until you feel satisfied. Now, it is time for the mid-range, roughly between GTX 1070 and RTX 3060. The first thing you want to turn down is the grass density, but not that much, as it does not affect performance as much as it once used to. So for now, turn it down to 0.75. Next up, set the post-processing to normal and do the same with the shader quality, the texture quality and the mesh quality. This last one in particular has a fairly large impact on performance. Basically, it controls the quality of distant objects. And when dropping it from high to normal, you only notice it in side-by-sides where the car isn't moving. If you're driving, you will not notice it. What you will notice though is turning the lighting quality down to normal. It does improve performance but it also turns shadows into blobs, which is still better than having <laughs> no shadows at all. If you still want more performance, lower the update rate of dynamic reflection to 1, the resolution to 256, and the detail to 0.2. This way, you still have working rear view mirrors, but with a solid performance boost. Finally, set the post-processing quality to low and disable light rays. And now, you mid-range boys should be good as well, but if you still want even more FPS, feel free to follow along until you feel satisfied. Now it is time for the low end, roughly between GD1030 and GTX 1060. Note that your system may be bottlenecked by memory in resource intensive maps, so you may want to go somewhere else. First of all, let's say Arrivederci to dynamic reflection. After that, set the post processing to lowest, the shader quality to low, and the mesh quality to low or even lowest. Also, disable depth of field and bloom, and finally, set the anisotropic filtering to 8. And even though we have turned down a substantial amount of settings, the game actually does not look that much worse compared to Ultra. And keep in mind that we have almost tripled our initial performance. If you still need a few more frames, you can go ahead and disable ambient occlusion, as well as setting your texture quality to low. And now, you low spec gamers should also be good. But if you still want even more FPS, feel free to follow along until you feel satisfied. And now people, it is time for the absolute potato boys. For those of you running integrated graphics, dual core processors, and less RAM than a Samsung smart fridge, your specs may be small, but your hope is big. And I respect that. Let us begin by mandar a far in culo the shadows, the textures, and the tire marks. At this point, we may as well turn off anti-aliasing for that extra crispiness. If this still isn't enough, first of all, I'm sorry man. And secondly, head to gameplay and check simplified collision physics. Finally, you could try heading back to graphics and enabling the wireframe mode, as it does slightly increase performance without affecting the visual quality. So this should be all in terms of graphical optimization. But if you still want to squeeze out that extra bit of performance without even touching the graphics, do not fear, as there are there are four main methods to get even more performance out of Beam&G. Again, don't expect miracles, and actually brace yourself, because some of these are really stupid. But starting with a good one, clean your game. By that, I mean verifying game integrity, deleting cache files, and maybe even doing a fresh reinstall. But there is one thing, one thing that so many people do, and that makes me cringe so fucking bad, I begin feeling chest pains. Mods. Way too many mods. Please, ask yourself this question. Do I really need more than 20 mods? I'll answer it for you. No! You don't! What the fuck, bruh? Secondly, you could try increasing the resolution you play at. I think this is pretty simple to understand. 
Then, you can also try out the Vulkan Renderer. This should in theory increase graphical performance. The problem is that it looks like this. And finally, there's removing shit from the maps. Just load your favourite map, press F11 and go nuts. So now, the optimization is over. Which means, it is time to... Unless you have short term memory loss, you should remember that I made you disable any form of frame rate limiter at the beginning of this tutorial. Now, I am begging you to enable all of them again. So people, I hope this helped. Please let me know if it did in the comment section. And if it didn't, make sure to absolutely smash that dislike button and double check that you are not subscribed. And as a bonus, I'm going to see...